Hi, everybody. It's Deborah from PeopleLovingAnimals.com. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching my videos today. Today's video is called Checklist for Choosing the Right Dog. Um, if you have not been here with me before, uh, we are on my website called PeopleLovingAnimals.com. We're going to use this article on my website called How to Choose a Dog Breed, Getting the Right Dog for You. And within this article, there is a checklist for all of the things that you should consider when you're trying to choose the right dog for you. So in this video, we're going to go over this. I'm going to give you the link to this article in the description box so that you'll have it. So don't worry about taking notes or anything. You can go to this article after the video if you'd like to, and you'll be able to click on all the links within the article. There's also a video in this article that I want to refer you to. And uh, so you'll have access to all the resource that we, resources that we talk about in today's video. So again, thanks so much for joining me. Um, if you are going to get a dog or a puppy, it's important to think carefully about what type of dog is best for you. Um, it's best for you and your family. And you should do this before you fall in love with the neighbor's litter of puppies and before you walk into a pet shelter, okay? Because you don't want to just say, oh, let's go down to the SPCA and look at dogs. You really want to have a good idea in your head of the right kind of dog uh, for you and your family. And you don't want to just go and go to the SPCA and pick out the dog that comes running up to you or whatever um, without thinking it through first. Because if if the dog's not right for you and your family, then you and your family aren't going to be right for the dog. So these questions and this checklist uh, really is important. The best way to learn about how to choose the right dog breed or the right dog for you and your family is learning what to expect from each breed. Uh, asking a few important questions are going to help with this process. Uh, number one on the checklist you should ask is how big will this dog get? Um, puppies start out small, but consider how, how big he'll be when he's full grown. Uh, do you want a little Paris Hilton sized dog that you can put in a tote bag? Uh, do you want a large dog that you can get on the living room floor and wrestle with? Um, you know, consider whether you want a lap dog. Will you be traveling with the dog? If you're going to be traveling with the dog, it's size matters, obviously. Whether you need the dog for protection. These are things to think about. Um, and even more important are things like whether the dog is or isn't good with children, other dogs, or cats. Think about uh, not only what kind of dog you like, but what kind of dog is good for you and your whole family, and which type of dog is going to fit into your life. So, you know, a good way to do this is this, you know, picture yourself with your new dog. What kinds of things are you going to be doing with the dog? You know, um, if you have tiny children, having a great big dog that's just going to knock them over with a wag of its tail, you know, might not be a very good idea. Um, but if you have, say, older children, they want to go out, they want to play frisbee with the dog, they want to wrestle with the dog, they, you know, then you might want a little bit bigger dog. Uh, like we said, if you're going to be traveling with your dog, you need to consider that. Um, so that's just one question on the checklist. How big will the dog get? What's the size of the dog? Uh, what kind of coat does this breed have? Um, some dogs have coats that re require more care than others, including daily brushing and professional grooming. Now, I have had several dogs over the years, um, two Twice in a row, I had a dachshund. I had a little dachshund named Maggie, and then I had another little dachshund named uh, Taz. And then right after Taz, I had a Boston Terrier named Cagney. And the reason I mention this is these are all short-haired dogs. They barely shed. They don't shed at all. The short-haired dachshunds, the Boston Terriers, they don't shed at all. And they don't need professional grooming, and they barely need brushing. Okay? So if you don't want to sit around brushing your dog all the time, you know, if you get a German Shepherd or a husky, especially in the spring, you're going to have, you know, globs of hair everywhere. Those dogs need to be brushed. If you're going to have a poodle, uh, for example, um, he's, they're not the only breeds that need professional grooming. But I remember when we were a kid, the first dog I ever had was a little poodle named Peppy. Well, Peppy needed to be taken to the groomer every six or eight weeks and, and to get his hair cut. And not only is that, uh, I don't want to say it's an inconvenience because maybe it's not Maybe you don't consider it an inconvenience, but it is a responsibility, but it's also an expense. Okay, so you have to think about that um, if your dog needs brushing, if they need professional grooming, and also if they're going to be shedding. So these are things you need you need to think about ahead of time. You need to know. Um, 
Also, what kind of climate that do, do you live in? I live in a dog that has a thick fur is not going to be comfortable in a, in a humid, hot climate. Um, you know, to, to consider, does anyone in your family have allergies? Um, you know, if, if they do consider a breed that uh, doesn't have so much fur and doesn't uh, shed so much. Um, and again, if you want a low maintenance pooch, uh, choose one that does not need professional grooming. So that's the second item on the ch checklist is what kind of coat uh, will this, does this dog have? Does the dog have? Number three, what kind of dog fits into your lifestyle? You know, you do have to think about this. You have to uh, select a breed that makes sense for your life and your activities. If you're an outdoorsy type of person, you like to go walking, you like to go camping, you like to go hiking, then you're going to consider a high energy breed like an Australian Shepherd, a Border Collie, a Springer Spaniel. If you're more likely to enjoy evenings curled up on uh, the couch with a good book, then you could consider a breed that required less exercise like a bulldog, a greyhound, actually, they don't require a lot of exercise. And a breed small enough to be a lap dog, uh, say like a Shih Tzu or, or a poodle, something small. So, you know, you want to be careful because you don't want to get, for example, a young boxer if you want to sit and snuggle on the couch all the time because a young boxer needs to have activity. A young boxer needs the kids around. They need to throw the Frisbee. They need to go to the park. They need to, you know, chase a stick in the lake. You like all these things. Do you see what I mean? So you have to consider again, if you're, if the dog isn't right for you, then you're not right for the dog. And you don't want the dog to be unhappy either. Don't adopt a high energy breed if you are not high energy. Now, you know, if you're someone who likes hiking and swimming and camping and all that stuff, then you then you need a high energy breed because you don't want it to be the opposite either where you get a little bulldog and she wants nothing to do, but she want, doesn't want to do anything but take a nap <laughs> and you're forcing her to go jogging every day. Do you know what I mean? So you do have to consider your lifestyle. What, what do you do in your life and is the dog going to be able to participate? Okay. Also consider where you live. Um, there's a video in this article. It, like I said, I'm going to give you the link to this article in the description box of the video. So you're going to be able to go here. You're going to be able to watch this video. This is a video specifically about um, choosing a dog if you live in a city. Okay. Um, you have to consider things, uh, whether you're allowed to have a dog, like if you live in an apartment complex, uh, not only are you allowed to have the dog, but are there fees for a dog? Because a lot of apartment complex will charge a pretty hefty fee, $200, $300, non-refundable um, fee if you have a pet. And a lot of apartment complexes are also charging monthly rent for the pet, anywhere from 10 to $30 uh, and up per month. Okay, so, you know, don't get the dog, fall in love with the dog, bring the dog home, the kids are in love with it, and then find out you can't afford a dog because there's a fee and there's monthly rent and everything. Do you know what I mean? Find out ahead of time based on where you live. Now, that can be true in an apartment complex, and it can also be true if you're in a condo. Um, one of the most important uh, issues that you want to um, think about when you're deciding on a dog and where you live is do you live in the city? You know, you got to make sure that there's going to be a place where you can walk the dog. If you're going to have to walk down five flights of steps every time your dog has to pee, mm, that might not work out. Do you know what I mean? You have to think of this stuff ahead of time and you have to make sure that where you live, whether it's the house you live in, the climate you live in, whether you live in an apartment or a condo, um, even if you live in a neighborhood, do you have a yard? Is your yard fenced in? Is your dog going to be safe in the yard? All those kinds of things. Think about where you live, all the aspects about where you live and how that's going to affect your dog. Okay. Um, also, how will this dog behave? Um, certain breeds are prone to certain behaviors. Now, it's it's never black and white. Um it's always, you know, statistics are st st statistics and, you know, certain patterns of behaviors and certain breeds, uh, you know, can be very dependable, but it's also, you know, 
Not every poodle is the same. Not every pit bull is the same. Not every German shepherd is the same. So you don't want to lump them all in, but you should at least have a basic idea of what is common behavior for a certain type of dog. Um, like for example, there are intelligent herding breeds like shepherds. They like to have a job and if they don't have one, they'll find one. A herding breed will try to herd your children, for example. I've actually seen this and it's one of the funniest things, but it's also, also very heartwarming. Um, when my father was a kid, for example, um, I was told that their black lab, who is not necessarily a herding breed, but they are they are a kind of protect the the pack kind of breed. Um, my dad and his two brothers, if they were playing in the yard and they got too close to the road, that German shepherd, he's, his name was Sam, he would actually herd those children back in. He would herd them back in so they would be closer to the house and away from the road. So, you know, you this dog might behave this way. Uh, you know, you have to just kind of know what their tendencies are. Um, these breeds, any intelligent breed of dog is going to need a lot of mental stimulation. They're going to need games. They're going to need exercise. They're going to need toys, uh, you know, they're going to need dog obedience. If you have a dog who is very high strung, if you have a breed that like, I keep using the boxer, for example, because I just think of a boxer as just a, just a young, strong, energetic, happy, jump all over you and lick your whole face kind of dog. And it's not the only breed that is high energy and so forth. But like, for example, you get a boxer puppy, you better get dog training, <laughs> you know, a higher, um, you know, any dog is going to benefit, uh, obviously, from dog training, but it's just something that you think you need to think about. If you're getting a breed that's going to be a handful, you need to think about that ahead of time, what the behavior of that dog is going to be and how you're going to handle it, not only as the dog's owner, but as a family. I've always thought dog training needs to be a family affair. OK, so in the um, toward the end of this video, I'm going to give you a really good recommendation for help with dog training. Uh, also, um, hunting breeds such as beagles and dachshunds, they have a keen sense of smell and they have an instinct to track down prey. So you know what? Your little dachshund or your little beagle might drive you crazy when they start digging up things in the yard, when they start digging in the house plants. You know, this is their instinct to hunt. Um, like I said, I had two, two dachshunds and they were, they would burrow, burrow, burrow. They wanted to be up under everything, up under everything. Uh, I had my first dachshund, Maggie, spent an entire afternoon trying to crawl up a gutter pipe because she saw a chipmunk run up the gutter pipe. You know, she's a hunter. It's her instinct. She spent the whole day. She didn't get the chipmunk. But she sat there trying to figure out a way to get her snout up into that gutter pipe to try to get that chipmunk. So, you know, you got to consider what are their instincts? You know, what are their instincts? Um, some dogs are going to be better with children than others. Um, some dogs are not going to get along with other dogs in your house, or they're not going to get along with a cat if you have a cat. Some are less active. Some are super active. So do your research and depending on, do the research on the breed, because if you do the research on the breed, that's going to tell you a lot about what that pet's instincts and behavior patterns are. And also depending on where you're getting the dog, if you're adopting the dog from a family, ask the their owners, you know, what's his behavior? What are some things I should know? What are some things I need to prepare for? If the dog's at a shelter, ask, you know, is the dog getting along with other dogs? Is it friendly? Do you feel like this dog enjoys children? You know, ask ask a bunch of questions. And again, this whole checklist, if it, you know, go to this article, print this out if you have to, and use this checklist when you're making these decisions about the dog that you're going to get. Also, you need to consider the cost of medical care and food for the dog. Um, now, I have some articles on my website, uh, and I'm going to give you a um, couple of links here about pet insurance. I'm a big proponent of pet health insurance. Um, once you go to the articles that I'm giving you um, regarding pet health insurance, uh, for example, on my website or on my YouTube channel, there's a video, is pet insurance worth it for dogs? Yeah. Uh, my second dachshund, Taz, I call her my $20,000 wiener dog.
All right. So if you're, if you want to hear that horror story, um, click into these articles that I'm giving you uh, about um, pet health insurance. Um, I have two on my website that I recommend. I researched uh, health insurance and I found the two that I thought were the best, the best price, the best quality, the best coverage. The, my number one recommendation is Healthy Paws. I'm giving you the link to them in the, um, in this article. And I'm also making a note right now not to forget to give you the link to this so that you can get some um, information about pet insurance. Now, also, I'm going to give you, I'll show you this link. I'm going to give you this link in the article in the description box, getting help with vet bills, ways to pet for pay for what your pet needs. Um, first, I'm going to give you the information about the two different health insurance um companies that I recommend. And also, if you don't know about care credit and you're a pet owner, you need to find out about care credit. Okay. Um, I'm a, not an affiliate for care credit, by the way. I don't get anything if you sign up for care credit. It's just something I wish I would have known about 20 years ago. And what they are is they are a credit card strictly for medical bills, not only for your dog, but for you. Like if you have um, high prescription bills, for example. And when it comes to your vet bills, if you have a care credit credit card and you have a vet bill of $200 or more, they will give you 18 months to pay it interest free. Now you can imagine if you're if you've been a pet owner for any length of time, um, you know for example, well my twenty thousand dollar doxy. I mean she had two thousand uh, dollar dental surgeries. She had a back injury that cost me a thousand dollars. She had you know that's all it takes is is one thing. So you can imagine how this would have helped me if I would have known about care credit because I could have put it on the credit card. Which number one that gives you the money to be able to help your pet if you had any kind of a medical emergency and they had, you know, they had a, an expensive vet bill that you were not counting on. Number one, it gives you the credit to be able to pay for it. And then they give you 18 months to pay for it uh, without any interest. So that's just, um, like I said, I'm gonna give you the link to this article. You're gonna be able to see this. And um, I give you a link to both my articles and they do include a video, is pet insurance worth it for dogs? Is pet insurance worth it for cats? Well, we talk about the pros and cons and um, how you can decide whether you should have pet insurance for your animal. And there's several things to consider in that. Um, one of my recommendations is Pet Plan. I'm giving you the information about them. I'm also giving you a link to my review of them and my um, other, my number one recommendation is Healthy Paws. And again, I'm giving you the information. I'm giving you the link. This is a, a really nice video by um, the owners of um, Healthy Paws. And then I don't want to talk about this in this video, but there is an organization called Hope Before Heaven, where if you had a dog or a, a cat who had a serious accident or something and you, you can't afford to pay the vet bill, they're an organization that raises money to pay for that. Uh, for people who who need it, so I'm I hate to mention it because it's so sad, especially when you're excited about getting a new dog. But it is something that I do want to spread the word about because if nothing else, if you can afford to make an a, make a donation to that organization, so I'm going to give you all that information again. Back to our checklist: consider the cost of medical care and dog food. You know, you do have to consider medical care for your animals. They've got to have their annual vet visit. They've got to have their shots. Um, you do have to consider if they do something. And, you know, if you've got a young dog, you know, if you've got a um, St. Bernard puppy, you might come home one day and realize he swallowed the kitchen bath mat. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Things happen. Things happen with dogs. Uh, fairly recently, I was at my vet's office and I was watching a family nervously waiting for their little, um, uh, it was a Jack Russell Terrier. If you don't, not familiar with that breed, Eddie from the show Frasier. Okay, that's a Jack Russell Terrier. Their little Jack Russell Terrier was in surgery. And I thought, geez, you know, do I ask, like, what's the matter with the dog? Is the dog going to make it? But they were like nervously in the waiting room. And then uh, a little while later, the vet comes out and she's holding something in her hand. And she says, we got it. And she held it up and it was an eraser. The dog had to have surgery because he swallowed, I mean, a full size eraser. Do you know, so even if you say, oh, my dog's young, he's healthy, we're gonna, we don't need pet insurance. We're not going to have any vet bill, you know, 
all it takes is, you know, something like that for the dog to become ill. Uh, you know, a lot of dogs will take a dangerous leap, you know, from the couch to the chair and break a leg. <laughs> you know, I had a little dachshund. I had two dachshunds, but the second dachshund, she slipped on the ice once. It cost me a thousand bucks. It cost me a thousand bucks. She slipped on the ice. She threw her back out. Her pain was terrible. She needed pain pills. She needed muscle relaxers. She needed an x-ray. The whole thing cost me a thousand dollars and it was just one slip on the ice. So I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just saying, I personally think that if you're going to adopt a pet, you should get a quote for the pet insurance for that do dog or cat and you should put it into your budget this is something that you should have. And again, I talk at length about that in my videos about that. I'm going to give you the links to all this stuff. So not only um, health insurance, but also food. You know, food is an expense. Consider the size of the breed and how much they're going to eat every day. A dachshund is going to eat one cup of food, one and a half cups of food a day. If you have a big dog, they could eat anywhere from two to four cups of food a day. You know, if you have to measure that out, go Go to the grocery store, look at the dog food, and I would try to stay with the most natural brands as you as you possibly can. They put a lot of crap in dog food uh, these days, so try to stay with the most natural um, brands of pet food that you can get. But um, you know, look at the pet food, look at the prices. Look at the back of the bag because the back of the bag or the can will tell you um, what's the weight of the dog and how much food should that dog get every day. Do the math, figure it out and say, okay, you know, this, you know, dog food, if you're buying it, dry dog food is always way cheaper, the bigger the bag, you know, buy the big bag because it's going to be cheaper per unit um, for the dog food. But, you know, do the math on it. Make sure that you can afford the food for the dog. OK, and, uh, you know, you've got to make sure that either you have money in your budget where you could afford an accident, you could afford an illness, you could afford a vet bill, you could afford medication. And if you can't afford those things, then you have to make sure you have money in your budget to be able to afford the pet health insurance. OK, so just consider that medical expenses and food. Is this something that you can afford uh, for your pet? Another item on our checklist is, do you have time for a dog? You know, I get really not only upset, but downright angry when I hear of somebody who has a dog and the dog is in the crate all day and they have an eight hour job. Uh, eight hour a day job with an hour and a half commute. And then they have hobbies every night of the week. That infuriates me. That infuriates me. And they say, oh, my dog is alone for 12 hours and he's fine. My dog's in the cage for 12 hours and he never makes the mess. Do you know what? Just because your dog is still alive when you got home doesn't mean he's okay. Just because your dog did not pee in his crate or in the house is not does not mean that it was okay for that dog to hold his bladder for 12 or 14 hours. You'll never convince me it is not okay. All right. Now, I understand there are some times where, you know, you got to be at work all day. You got a meeting after work. You got this or that. But I, you know, I don't believe in leaving in the morning and not coming back till night. How would you like it if it was, you know, say seven o'clock in the morning and you're being left alone for the whole day and you're not allowed to use the bathroom? You're not allowed to urinate the entire day. You're not allowed to pee in somebody's. They don't you can't pee for 12 or 14 hours. I don't agree with it. OK, so if you're going to get a dog, please make sure that you have the time for the dog. Now, this doesn't mean that, oh, if you have a full time job and obligations after work, you can't have a dog. OK, th that doesn't. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you've got to make arrangements for the dog. Um, if you have a full-time job and then you have a board meeting the first Monday of every month where you're at work until 8 p.m., you need to have a neighbor or somebody come over and let your dog out. Now, if you live alone, if you live alone, you need to make arrangements. If you're going to be gone for long periods of time, you need to make arrangements for maybe the kid next door, maybe the old lady next door, somebody, you've got to have somebody go in and let your dog relieve himself. 
Um, if you don't live alone, it's a lot easier. You know, if you are married and you have a spouse and you have kids, then if you're not home, somebody's home. You know, somebody's home most of the time to spend time with the dog, feed the dog, and also let the dog out, walk the dog, okay? But it's a very, very important item on the checklist is do you have time for the dog? Does your family have time for the dog? Um, consider your work set schedule, consider your social activities, decide whether you have time for the dog, but you also have to decide what kinds of things can your dog participate in? And again, I go back to dog training. If you have good dog training and your dog is well behaved, they can participate in, in a lot of stuff. Um, you know, if they're well behaved and they're not a pain in the ass, you know, because their behavior is bad, if they're a well behaved dog, they can participate in a lot of things. So think about it ahead of time. Like, what's this dog's daily life going to be like? Um, you need not only time to manage their care, but time to spend with them. Um, don't get a dog if he's going to be left alone 10 hours a day every day. Um, if they're going to be lucky to just see you for a few hours on the weekend, um, it's not okay to get a dog if the dog is going to be uh, alone most of the time. If you live alone, this is a huge concern because you're the only one that's available for the dog. If you have a spouse or children, you might be able to be a little bit more flexible because at least one member of the family would be home most of the time, regardless of everybody's work and school schedules. So please make sure that if you get a dog, they're not going to wind up in a dog house out in the backyard, they're not going to wind up spending their whole life in the crate, and that they're not going to let wind up spending their whole life alone. And also, don't be one of these people that leaves your dogs for 14 hours and then gets pissed off when you come home and your couch is ripped apart and there's pee on the floor, okay? Dogs get anxiety. They they can only sit for so long by themselves. You can't get, you can't get mad about these things, okay? So, it's a really important point. If you can't tell by the fact that I'm getting kind of upset, it's just important to me because I care about the animals so much. Uh, the last point I want to talk about, and we, we've talked about this a little in the video, is dog training. I really think it's important, um, especially if you've never owned a dog before, but even if you have owned a dog before, getting dog training is something that's going to help you and your dog for the rest of your lives, okay? I do recommend the online dog trainer. It's owned by a man called he calls himself Doggy Dan. He is a um, sorry, professional dog trainer and also a dog behavioral specialist. He has a website called The Online Dog Trainer. I'm giving you the link in the article. I'm also giving you the link in the description box of the video. Um, and what it is, is it's a video training website. He's got over 300 dog training videos where you actually get to see Doggy Dan go into people's houses and work with their dogs. And he teaches you how to train your dog and you get to watch him do it. He's got a $1 three-day trial where for $1 you can get into his website. You can watch as many videos as you want. And then if you decide you like it, his monthly membership is $37 a month. You get it cheaper if you get six months at a time. So for $37, you could be in there for a whole month and you can watch all the videos and you can get all kinds of advice on dog training. So he's the one that I recommend. It's really good. And I do believe that if you get dog training, um, and again, it's a family affair. Everybody should be watching the videos. Everybody should be kind of doing it together. So you're all consistent. You're all working with the dog in the same way. And it'll make your life easier. It'll make your dog's life easier. And uh, it'll just make for a very really nice relationship for years to come with you and your dog. And like I said, if your dog is well behaved, um, he's going to be able to do more things with the family. He's going to, you're going to be able to take him places. He's going to be able to go camping with you. He's going to be able to go to the park with you. His life is going to be so much better. And so is yours because it's going to be less stress. Okay. So that is a, a recommendation. Um, so I hope that this video has helped you a couple of things before we leave. Uh, first of all, like I say, this is my website, peoplelovinganimals.com. I do all kinds of articles and blog posts and videos all about the help, support, care, and training of dogs and cats. Um, on my YouTube channel, I'm, I'm, it's a fairly new YouTube channel, but I am accumulating quite a few videos there on all these different topics. So I would love it if you would visit the website. I would love it if you would be a subscriber to this YouTube channel. There are links in the description box on different ways that you can support peoplelovinganimals.com. 
Um, also, I have a dog lover's email list. I have a cat lover's email list as well, but I do have a dog lover's email list. I'm going to give you the link to it in the description box. And if you subscribe to that list, I will give you a dog training manual written by Doggy Dan, uh, the dog trainer that we were just talking about that. You'll get that from me as a free gift. And then when you're on my dog lover's email list, about every five or seven days, you'll get a new email from peoplelovinganimals.com all about dogs, whether it's an article, a blog post, a video, all about the helping, supporting, caring for, and training of dogs. So I would love to have you on as an email subscriber. One last thing, I donate to animal charities. Um, I'm going to just show you quickly um, other article. I am an affiliate for several things on my website. In other words, some of the things, not all of them, but some of the things that I recommend to people on my website, I do get a commission for. Um, I'm a um, an affiliate for the uh, pet health insurance companies, uh, the dog training website uh, for Amazon. So if I'm recommending certain products, now what I do is I research um, certain products and services like pet health insurance. I research dog trainers I research. I research and then I write articles and videos and I give people, this is the one that I recommend. This is the one that I recommend based on my research. I do full product reviews on these that you can see on my website. And then if people do in fact purchase these products, I get a small commission. I give 10% of those commissions to animal charities, as you can see here. And if you go to the homepage of my website, peoplelovinganimals.com, you'll be able list of the animal charities that I donate to. So for that reason, I'm going to ask you to support peoplelovinganimals.com. You can do that by subscribing to my email list, by visiting the website, by subscribing to the YouTube channel, um, and most importantly, by sharing this with your friends and family who have pets. Please share the website and the YouTube channel because um, if we're all going to be purchasing products and services for our dogs and cats, a portion of it might as well be going to animal charities to help more than just the dog you're buying it for or the cat you're buying it for. So again, thank you so much for visiting. I hope this video was helpful. Please feel free to comment in the comment section below. I would love, love to get your feedback or if you have any other questions or if you have some tips that you would like to share with the people watching this video, I would really appreciate um, your participation. So again, thank you so much. My name is Deborah, and my website is peoplelovinganimals.com. Thanks again. Bye-bye.